Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and I'm the Information Specialist for the Community Library Network. There are a lot of people out there looking to maximize their job search, and I'm going to show you how to use some free tools available through Google to help you along your way. Before you start asking yourself, why should I trust this guy for advice on searching? Let me give you some of my background. I've been a small business owner who has hired people, and I also spent over a decade as an operations and administration manager for a large corporation where I hired close to 100 people a year. I can tell you from experience, there is a definite difference between those who use power job searching techniques and those who don't. Employers are going to appreciate the time you spend, your attention to detail, and the informed and organized position that power job searching helps to create. So let's briefly discuss what we're going to cover. First, we're going to discuss some things to be aware of while you're starting your search from home. Next, I'll explore creating a job search plan. Then we'll roll into creating a resume, and finally we'll talk about preparing for remote interviews. If you're launching into your new job search from home, you should be aware that there are some challenges built into that process so that you can prepare to overcome them. First, word of mouth opportunities are going to be fewer. Many job seekers have traditionally leaned on these opportunities to direct them toward available jobs. But just because you're looking in an era where some of the word of mouth opportunities are fewer doesn't mean you can't do things like leverage previous professional contacts or even social media to help you in your search. Distractions are also different at home. You may be challenged with managing childcare, domestic work, and even personal living arrangements. These things are often amplified if you're unemployed and can make dealing with them that much more stressful. Finally, there are many more types of positions that have opened up with remote working options. These may be new to you, but if you're taking your job searching seriously, you're working from home as you're looking for that new job anyway. Learning how to work from home can take some getting used to. So here are some tips to keep things rolling as you're looking for that new job or career. Create or keep a routine. If you take a shower and eat breakfast before heading off to work, keep doing just that. Maintain regular hours and set yourself a schedule and try to keep to it. The routine is going to help you maintain a sense of normalcy and stay productive. Create a dedicated workspace. This doesn't have to be fancy. If all you have is the kitchen table, that's fine. Making sure you have a dedicated space to go to every day helps you in separating the real work that finding a job can be from what your home life is. Even if you have to clear that space before dinner time, set it up. Make sure that you take a lunch and plan some breaks. Work these right into your schedule and don't forget to take them. Planning for those short bursts of downtime will help you to stay focused and reduce your stress level. Gather your tools together so that you can be productive. You may find that you will need some things for your job search that you don't have. We've all been there. You're trying to jot down a note from a phone call and you find out that you've grabbed a pen that has gone dry. Don't let that happen when you're on the phone with your potential employer. Take some time to assess what you need and make sure you have it. You should also make a daily to-do list. I find that it's easier to do that at the end of the day because I know right where I'm leaving off and I have an idea of where I'm headed. This helps to keep you from popping back over to your job search area because you thought of something to do at the end of the day when you're supposed to be reading your kids a bedtime story. It also helps you to get a strong start in the next morning. Finally, and perhaps most important, respect your need for downtime. Job searching is hard work, harder than people who aren't actively doing it realize. It's also stressful, and you need your downtime in order to deal with it all. If you get burnt out before you get set down for an interview, your potential employer is going to notice. Now let's talk about how you can leverage some tools to help your journey be a successful one. I'm going to start off by talking about how to leverage Google Sheets. The first thing you need to do is log into your Google account. If you don't have one, you can quickly set one up. One thing to think about, and we deal with this all of the time at the library, you have to remember your email address and the password. And if you're logging in on a computer that is different from the one that you normally do, you might want to bring your cell phone along with you so you can get the authentication code that you need to be able to get in and do things. If you don't have those things, not even a librarian is going to be able to help you get back into your account. 
Once you're logged into your Google account, you're going to click on the Google Apps and then on Google Drive. From your Google Drive, you're able to create a new Google Sheet. So what's a Google Sheet? Well, it's a spreadsheet similar to Microsoft Excel, except it doesn't require a yearly subscription to get you in, like Office 365 now does. You're going to click New, and then select Google Sheets, and click Blank Spreadsheet. The first thing you're going to want to do is rename it. So what are we going to do with our new Google Sheet? Well, this is a great place to track your efforts. Not only will this help you organize your job search, but it's going to help you feel a sense of accomplishment in a process that can sometimes feel like you're getting nowhere. In this sheet, you can track open positions, companies you're interested in, salary or hourly rates, websites, and all types of other notes that you may need. So let's talk a moment about how to set up a Google Sheet. After you've named your sheet, you can start by making some headers. These headers can be whatever you like. I'm using the name of the position, the company it's with, how much it pays, their website, when I applied, a few follow-up dates, and then a space for notes. Once all of that is entered, I can make adjustments to things like the column width and bolding my headers. Google will automatically save all your changes. Now that you have a sheet set up to track your efforts, it's time to really start searching. If you've changed jobs or careers any time in the last two decades, you've likely experienced using digital tools to find your new opportunity. Most employers list new jobs online, and they manage the entire application process digitally. If this is new to you, there's good news. Librarians across the country usually are pretty skilled in helping people figure out this process. So all you have to do is go to your local library and someone is likely able to help get you started. There are also great helpers at places like the Department of Labor, so feel free to look there too. We're going to use Google Search to help find some new opportunities. Jobs on Google Search pulls advertisements from all over the internet and creates an easy list of potential jobs specifically for you. All you have to do to get started is go to the Google search bar. Now, I like to make sure that I open it in a new browser tab so that I can have my Google search and my Google sheet open at the same time. In the search bar, you're going to type what you're looking for. You may want to use terms like jobs near me, retail jobs, part-time jobs, full-time jobs, customer service jobs. You get the idea. These search terms are going to do the job for you. One thing to keep in mind is that if you're looking for jobs in a different city from where you're doing your search, you're going to have to include that city in your search. Otherwise, Google is going to populate your results with things that are close to where you're doing your search. So let's take a moment to explore how this happens in action. You start your search right in the Google search bar. For this example, I'm typing in jobs near me. The results are gonna pull up in the jobs window. When you click on that window, it takes you directly into the Google listings for jobs in your selected area. You can then scroll through the jobs and the results until you find one that appeals to you. I'm just picking some at random here for illustration. When you find one that you like, you can highlight the information that goes into your spreadsheet and paste it directly into your sheet by switching the tabs back and forth at the top of your browser. I enter everything I can so that I can see all of the relevant information about jobs I'm interested in in one place. If the columns aren't sized correctly, you can always just click and drag them over to fit. Google also has some special tools that veterans can use to help them with their search. Many veterans have extensive skills that they don't know how to transfer over to the civilian workforce, and Google can make that easier for them to figure out where their skills are in that workforce by using their Military Occupational Specialty, or MOS code, in the search. So let's take a look at how veterans can leverage that unique experience for just a moment. Start right at the Google search box and type in Veterans Jobs Near Me. And a blue box is going to show in your results where you can enter your occupational codes from your service experience. The results that get populated are from employers looking for the specific skill set that your previous military experience has prepared you for. The other thing you shouldn't forget is that filters are important. 
They can help you to save time, increase the efficiency and effectiveness of your search. I'll show you how you can work filters to get the most out of them. When you are in your search results, simply go to the filter button in the top left of the results page and click on it. You will be able to see all of the filter results that you can narrow your categories down by to fit your specific needs. This is going to help tailor the results directly to your needs. And you can select multiple filter options to ensure that you're looking at everything that might be a good fit for you. You can save jobs that match your specific needs. Let's say you found a particularly juicy job, read through its description, and you know you'd be a great fit, but you're not quite ready with your resume to be able to apply. All you have to do within Google search is click save. This is going to bookmark the listing so that you don't have to search for it again later. You'll be able to pull it up by clicking the tab titled saved and all of the job listings you've saved are going to be in one easy to read list. Saving jobs is easy. There are two simple ways to save jobs that you're interested in. First, when you're in the job description, you can click the save button in the upper right hand corner. Second, you can click the little save icon in the listing preview on the list. When you've saved some jobs, all you have to do to view them is click the save button in the center of the top header to view all of your saved positions. Now you've learned how to leverage the Google search tool and be an efficient and effective searcher. But the landscape of available jobs is always changing, so how do you keep up with it? Alerts are a great way for you to stay up to date with what is out there. Employers are posting new positions all of the time, and usually they don't do it on a specific schedule. So alerts is going to help you out by sending you a notification directly to your email when a new one comes up. So let's take a look at how to set up an alert. In the bottom left corner of your browser, you'll see a little bell with a toggle next to it in the little blue section. All you have to do is flip that toggle and you've created an alert that will flag anything that matches your search and filter parameters that you've set up. Now that you've found some great opportunities and set yourself up to stay in the know about new ones, what do you do? I suggest that you start by putting everything into one place where you can easily look at what you're interested in, track where you are in the process, and provide some ease of mind about ensuring that all of your I's are dotted and T's are crossed. That's where Sheets comes in. Do you need a resume? You bet you do. Even if the job posting doesn't require one, which is increasingly unlikely, a resume is going to help you organize your past work history and talents and ensure that your future employer and you are on the same page. If you don't have one yet, Google has you covered there too. They have a ton of templates that you can use and even customize to fit your needs. To find a resume template, start from the Google search screen and click on your Google Apps button in the upper right hand corner. Then select Google Drive. In your Google Drive, select New and then take your cursor over to the arrow by Google Docs. This arrow will pull up the option to select a template. When you click on it, you will see all of the options for templates available to you. You can take a look at the thumbnails and select one that you think is going to work. Once you have it selected, you can start inputting your own information and then customize things like font and layout. The other cool thing about building your resume in Google Docs is that you can easily share it with people you trust. You can have them review your resume and help you ensure that it is going to get you into that interview chair. You can provide them different levels of access where they can either edit, comment, or just view your resume. Hey you! Yeah, you! Could you help review this for me? To share your document, all you have to do is go into the upper right section of your document and select the Share button. You can type the email address of the person you want to share it with, or you can simply copy the link and share it on your own. You can then select how much access that you want to give that person, and even type them a note before you send it off. Once you've applied to some positions, don't forget to enter where you are in the process back in your spreadsheet. I like to suggest making notations about who you talk to and when you talk to them so that when they call back you don't get caught off guard.
It also helps me stay on track and form my to-do list for the following day. So let's say you've been called back and the potential employer wants to do a video conference with you as a potential candidate. Well, Google has you covered there too. Google Meet is a video conferencing platform that you can leverage for practice. We've used it with some of our teen programs and many students leverage it for their classwork as well. The key thing about video conferences is that you should practice before you're in the hot seat so you have one less thing to worry about. So I recommend finding a friend that you can set up a video chat with and get comfortable with the general video conference process. It doesn't change very much between platforms, so your potential employer, if they choose a Zoom meeting, it's gonna look pretty similar. So let's look at how you can set that up now. To get started in Google Meet, simply go back to that Google Apps section in the upper right and select Meet. You can then choose to set up a new meeting. I like to select Get Link to Share so that I can send it to everyone that I need to. When you're ready to start your video, simply go back into the Meet app and paste that link into the box and click Join. The prompts are going to be intuitive and you might have to click a button to let your video partner into the session, but it's simple. Log on and play around with the resource before you have to use it in an interview. Can you hear me okay? Hi. I can hear you. There's also some general tips for you to consider when doing a video conference. First, make sure you look toward the camera. Your interviewer will be able to tell if you're watching yourself on the screen or if you're looking into the camera. Think of this like making eye contact. It's something that you want to do during your interview. Speak slowly and clearly. Many of the microphones on things like laptops and tablets aren't very good. And when you're sending out that poorly recorded voice over the internet where it loses even more clarity, do yourself a favor and start out as clear as possible so that they can not only hear, but also understand you. You also need to pay attention to your lighting. Don't sit in front of an open window. They won't be able to see you clearly. The light source should be in front of you, not behind you. Along those same lines, make sure you have a pretty neutral background. Neutral doesn't mean boring, but you shouldn't have a ton of knickknacks behind you that could be distracting. Speaking of distracting, I know you're at home, but make sure you dress professionally. There's nothing more distracting for an interviewer than having someone who looks like they aren't taking the interview seriously. If you're in sweatpants and a t-shirt, that's not likely the impression you should make. Finally, just like for a normal interview, practice. It's important that you feel comfortable so that you can focus on your actual answers. I hope you got some really great tips for increasing your chances with your job search. Remember, there's always people ready and waiting to help you overcome challenges like these at your local library. And if they don't know how to help you, they can usually point you towards someone who can. Thanks for watching and good luck with your search.